Hello and all welcome back to the TNC podcast. Uh, no Norwich City games to review, but plenty still to talk about, Chris. Absolutely. There's lots to talk about on this podcast, Jack. The agenda is as you gonna, follows. Are you going to run me through it? The agenda is as follows. The international break rundown. Well, the things that people will actually give a shit about. Yep. Then we want to talk about Gabriel Sarah oh, because there's some he's good, good news about old Gabby Sarah. Um, Johnny Rowe, there's news about him as well. David Wagner. Good news about him. Good news about him as well. Ish, bit annoying, but okay. good news about him. Okay. And the Athanasios. Good news about them. News about them. Any bad news? Um. Well, we are going to do some September match predictions. Oh. Yeah. Now the last time we did match predictions, I said we might get relegated. Yes. And that might be where the bad <laughs> news comes in. But I've got a funny feeling it might be good news. And finally, we will talk about Twitter questions. Oh. My favourite part the of the best. week, and, I, and I've had a little glimpse through this week, don't usually, some corkers in there, Chris. Yeah, well, there is one in particular which I can't wait uh, to, to read to you. And so... Good to see you. Yeah, we've done it in a funny order. I don't well, know you why have I done. just sort of took your no, job You were there. just so excited, I've got something to say, Jack. Let's do a public service announcement. As always. Lakens. They're very yeah, smart. Yeah, yep. Yeah. I've gone and got you a nice glass. Wow. Big up to Duncan from the Complete Angler who kindly donated these to us up the, they up are the, stunning. Up the complete angler. Yeah. Um, and of course, we've got oh. the new Lakens Lager. So, and this is... Now this is an exclusive. Yeah, well this is the first time I've yeah, yeah. genuinely, you've had, I've had a few already. Yeah, yeah. You've had a few. Now I'm really excited for you to have this because yeah. you are more of a lager drinker than an ale drinker. Yes, I Now am. if you want to get hold of some of the Lakens LGR, the link's in the description as well as a 20% discount code. It's TNCLGR. Just add that at checkout. Decent pour. Of course, a lovely drop. Oh, it's... I mean, there's Now, a bit, give it a sniff. Yeah, there's a, snot, there's a bit of head on there, but, you know, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll deal with it. Give it a sniff. What do you think? Oh, what does it smell it of? smells of promotion. <laughs> Mixed with... Maybe, like, Wembley Heroics. <laughs> now, it's lagered longer... Oh, for fresher flavour. And one can seems to get you through just over half a pint, so I'm going to have to open up a second one. Okay, go on then. Go on, have your first sip, live on okay, camera. here we go. This is thrilling content. Oh my God. <laughs> it's good, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's yes. good, isn't it? Oh yes, here we go, cheers. Cheers. Um, here's to, oh, here's a, to promotion. That's a lovely drop. Yeah, it's good. Let can me... you buy this online? Of course you can buy and it online. And is there a discount code? There is a discount code. It's in the description. Um, and remember, this, is, this isn't going to be around uh, forever. They only brew it in certain oh. amounts. So if you want some, God, you need to get it quickly. And a discount code certainly won't be hanging around. That is so... good news. Mm. Seriously good news. Almost as good a news mm. as... Oh. By the way... <laughs> God, it's good. <laughs> If you're I'm listening on audio, yeah, I was about to sorry, say, <laughs> sorry to the uh, the Spotify and uh, SoundCloud and oh. iTunes listeners. Oh, it's um, so drinkable. We're we're just drinking on this episode. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's good news, isn't it? It's really good news. It um, is. Adam Eder yes. scored a penalty for Ireland, and he absolutely bossed Virgil Van Dyke. He did. Well, I, I, I let mean, me, that's good news. Isn't let it? me actually pull the tweet up of. Uh, so I was I was playing golf yesterday, so I didn't really see much of what was going on, and then I saw this tweet. Shock. I logged onto Twitter. And I saw this tweet from Miguel Delaney, yep. who is a uh, is a uh, the chief football writer at the Independent. Yep. And I read it, and I thought I was drunk, but then I thought I haven't had any beer today. Yeah. And this is what the the tweet read: The Dutch are there for the taking. Virgil Van Dyke looking very vulnerable against Adam Eder. <laughs> And it got me thinking, Chris. Yeah. When Norwich get promoted this season, oh. and Adam Eder's leading the line for Norwich next season, we've news, got it? a chance against Liverpool. I mean, it's something else, isn't it? I would have never have expected that tweet uh, to be um, posted. No. And I'm delighted to see it. And I think that that penalty... Don't get me wrong. I know they, they obviously went on to, to lose that game. But I believe that penalty will do Adam Eder the world of good in terms of his confidence. Again, you know, that he has actually delivered mm. when, when asked upon so far this season uh, for, for Norwich City. Yes, of course, he could have done more in certain circumstances, but that penalty was brilliant. And do you know what I loved, actually, Jack? More than the penalty... Oh, I think I know what you're going to say. ...was his cello. Oh, that was what got me excited. What What was it about Adam Sello that got you excited? It, was, an, it was a side of Adam Eder that I hadn't seen before. 
There mm. was a degree of aggression behind it. Yeah. And just pure passion. And it yes. and that celebration signaled to me that was a man mm. who is ready to take the next step in his career. Now, look, I, I obviously started the Adamita fan club last week. You did. Um, and I laughed at you. There was a slow take up. Yeah. Not many applicants. And then last night, plenty of people wanted to join the Adamita fan club. This is the man who will be leading the line for Norwich City over the next coming, you know, few months. Yep. Um, and the penalty, I think, against against the Dutch. Um, will be huge. And like you say, Chris, it was that celebration that got me excited. That was a man who has been in the shadow of other strikers, breaking free, yeah. standing this. on the main stage with the, with the spotlights on him and just arms out going, I'm here. Yeah, no, I agree. I'm and here. What I loved about the penalty itself was the he gave he gave the GK the eyes, yeah. which, I, which I adored, it shows yeah. confidence, absolutely planted it. Yeah. In, into the corner. Keeper stands no chance even if he does go the right way. And the celebration for me, right, it wasn't necessarily the passion for once. And you know that I love a passion merch. A passion merch. <laughs> um, it was the smile from ear to ear. Mm. You know, it's very evident that Adam enjoys playing international football. It's very evident that that goal meant a lot to him. And I, I think that that is fantastic news for Norwich City going to this next period because we've got some winnable games. Uh, he is going to be well. You'd you'd, you'd imagine that he'll be leading the, the line for for Norwich City alongside Barnsley. Yeah. Um, so fingers crossed he can he can deliver. Now that was the good news of the international break. There was some bad news, mm-hmm. and that is that Marcelino Nunez looks to be injured. He yeah. was seen uh, limping off on, on the crutches uh, while away with Chile. The good news is that we do have replacements. Correct. We signed Forshaw. Correct. That I keep forgetting about yep. in the transfer window. We've also got um, Borgia Signs to come back. And we've, we've talked about the Signs spice, haven't we? Yeah. Um, that, that little bit of Spanish spice. So not the end of the world, mm-hmm. but for Marcelino, you know, I think this season was the season people expected him to really break through. Yeah. And we, we well, he hasn't been given the chance. Yeah. But that hasn't happened as of yet and that will now be delayed. It will be delayed. I uh, I don't know if anyone else feels like this, right? But I actually think that, yet again, there was more bedwetting over this. Over what? I really do. I think, over the injury? I think everyone saw Marcelino Nunes get injured and went, oh, God, it's the end of the world. Oh, we're going to start losing games. Oh, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I'm the biggest Marcelino Nunes fan, and I genuinely believe he'll be a fantastic player for Norwich City, and he will come good this season for sure without a shadow of a doubt I say come good he's already been decent um, last season he will be even better this season it's delayed don't get me wrong but we've got cover Jack and that's why we've signed the players that we've signed we've got ample cover in that position he wasn't a starter for us it's okay calm down mm. yellows mm. it's alright like you know losing Sargent is obviously massive like I can't I can't bat that away I get, I get that Yeah, but I don't think fans should like, and obviously I send my best wishes to Marcelino Nunes, but I've seen Norwich fans posting stuff like, oh, we're going to start losing games now. Oh my God, it's awful news. Ah, blah, blah, blah. Cheer up. Mm. Well, we've got cover. We've got Adam Forshaw. We've got Liam Gibbs. We've got all sorts of players that we've, we could, if, if any player positionally was going to get injured, it would be that one where you'd go, yeah, we've, we've got cover there. So, Keep calm and carry on, Yellows. So we're not my worried about on that. I obviously, obviously, hopefully wish that he comes back as soon as possible. Of course. Uh, Dimi Nunes, clean yes. sheet for Greece. Standard stuff for the Emperor he, of Norfolk, He's been a, a player, actually, this season, I think we've touched on it a few times already, that has just really excited me. And I think we're, we're yeah. finally starting to see the the, the true Dimi Nunes. Yeah. There's yep. been glimpses in the past few seasons, and we always knew there was a player there, but mm. this system seems to really suit him. 100% Jack, it's his aggression, it's the way he's taking on slide challenges, it's the way that he's getting his head up when he's when he's, when he's he's bombing forwards with the ball. He's taking players on now, he wasn't taking players on under Smith at all, saying that, neither did Maxi. I think they were all poisoned under, under Smith, to be honest with you, with regards to bringing the ball to the opposition. Mm. Dimi looks like a completely different player, but the... But the but then I sort of contradict myself immediately and I say, this is the Dimmy that we saw when we first signed him. We signed him and Gibbo, if you remember. Yeah. I think it was in January, wasn't it? We signed yeah. him and they had a real strong end to the season. I was like, cool, blimey, Riley, look very, very good. And obviously then we're hit by 
uh, you know, the, the lack of uh, all sorts of stuff in the Premier League and obviously the relegation, etc. And now he looks back to his best and good on him. Mm. I'm buzzing for Dimi. And he looks really, really up for it, and long may it continue. Let it, you know, we're, we're, we're well, we've, we've seen the end of August, we're into September, so it meant awards for August. Mm. Uh, and we basically had a clean sweep. Now, I was, um, before we get on to the official awards, this went down so easy, by the way, dangerously drinkable. Oh, God. Um, the, not the top 20, a brilliant championship podcast, um, did their manager of the month, young player of the month, yep. and player of the month. Norwich City clean sweep. Good. Manager of the month, Wagner. Young player of the month, Rowe. Yeah. Player of the month, Sarah. That's why we like not the top 20. Absolutely. But imagine my shock, Jack. Yeah. I mean, factually, they should they should all be there. The the Now, the official... <laughs> I'll do a second already. It's just so... It's, it's good. so good. Even better at the glass, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Touch of class. The official um, awards... Now, Sarah was nominated for Player of the Month. Yes. Wagner was nominated for Manager of the Month. Yeah. No Johnny Rowe on that list. Crazy. Bummer. Maybe maybe the, uh, the the officials at the EFL are, are, are helping me out somewhat. Um, <laughs> Sarah won Player of the Month. Yeah. Obviously. Manager of the Month didn't go to Wagner, despite right. the start yeah. of the season. Let's start with Sarah. Yeah. Who, at the moment is operating in a complete world of his own. He is, he is. And it speaks volumes, Jack, as to how important it was that that we managed to keep hold of Gabriel, you know, the, in this transfer window just gone. That's probably the best yeah. bit of business yeah, yeah, that, agree. That, that, that we could have done, really. Um, although I have to say, I, I do firmly believe that there was a problem put in the room uh, that wasn't a problem. Gabriel Sarah you know, made it very clear to, to his people that he wanted to stay at the football club and that he only would have moved if he was forced out of this football club and he wasn't. Um, and I'm delighted that that's the case. I think he'll be worth a hell of a lot of money soon, Jack. I think he's going to go for more than Emi Buendia. Wow, I really? I think he's going to go for more than Emi Buendia. I think he's going to be, yeah, de- definitely our definitely our record sale. Um, I mean, just, just listen to some of these stats, okay? Mm, listen. And for the football stat geeks out there, this is why Gabriel Sara was given the player of the month for the championship, okay? 341 minutes, one goal, two assists. This is the one that blows my mind, Jack. 19 chances created. Yeah, that's remarkable. Four big chances created. 2.24 XA. That one cringes me out. (laughs) Expected assists. God's sake. What are we going to have next? Expected passes. (laughs) Expected, I like, expected I like. sips of the water bottle to optimise his performance. I mean, anyway, let's quickly move on. I like expected um, 81% assist. pass accuracy. Yes, please. I'll have a slice of that. Uh, 39 passes into the final, final third. Final third. Final third. Four out of six successful dribbles. 21 recoveries. 13 out of 27 accurate crosses. 18 accurate long balls. 18 accurate long balls. That's... Accurate. Holy Moses, that's good. 19 ground duels won and 12 tackles won. I An think... average rating of 8.4 wow. on the old uh, who scored and three man of the match performances. You, you, it, it's actually it's mad scary. how, how a Premier yeah. League club hasn't gone. Here's 45 million quid. Yeah. We'll have him, please. Well, considering the amount of money being spent on very average players... I agree entirely. It's, I think the, the thing that stands out to me there, Chris, not only you know the attacking returns we've seen from Sarah, the all-round game he's got. And I think one of the big... Agreed. I think one of the big criticisms of Norwich City last season was the midfield. And yep. we, we just didn't look balanced. We either had lots going forwards or too much defensively. And now with, with Kenny McLean dropping quite deep and Sarah moving forwards, it feels as if we've, dare I say it, found that balance. No, we have. No, don't dare. We have. Mm. Look at it. I mean, look, Rotherham, Rotherham was a one-off. Mm. Okay? It was definitely a one-off. Um, I am so, so happy with how this midfield are operating. We're so slick now. Everyone knows what to do, when to do it who to go with, who to not go with. It, I am beyond impressed with what David Wagner has managed to drill these boys into. And long may it continue, Jack, because yeah, we'll go on to our September predictions in a minute. We're, we've got some winnable games. and I, I cannot see how that midfield gets bossed by any midfield in the Championship. Genuinely, I can't. 
You mentioned uh, Wagner there. He lost out uh, on the manager of the month to the Leicester City coach. I have to admit, Jack, right, th- this is boiled my piss, this has. Has it? I think this is absolute robbery, and I think it's absolutely disgusting. I'm Honestly, it's, I'm really angry about it. I cannot believe he's not one man of the, manager of the month. Has the Leicester manager actually done more than the Norwich manager to win no, that, I, that award? I wouldn't say so, no. Well, let's get the, bring the well, facts Well, Norwich up. City have played five league games this season. They've scored 14 goals, mm-hmm. which is a league high. Uh, conceded a uh, plus six goal difference, 10 points. Okay. Leicester uh, have two more points than us, have scored half the goals. Right. Um, and have conceded a few less than us. So you um, could say they've won it on the basis that they've got two more points than us? Yes. I would fair? also argue that Leicester's performances haven't been as convincing. Their their games this season that their last outing was a one nil defeat to Hull. Mm-hmm. Um, they were then they beat uh, they beat Rotherham two one. They beat Cardiff two one. Huddersfield one nil uh, and Coventry two one. So, so every game so has been that, a one goal yeah, margin. So that award has been given based upon more points, not upon managerial performances and performance levels. Yeah, and and that is what managers should do. That is a good sign of a good manager is one that absolutely dominates the opposition and mm. bosses them tactically yeah. and and da- David Wagner has done that time after time the Leicester manager has botched it and has got lucky quite frankly in many games this season let's flip this in a, into a positive the fact that we're even getting angry yeah, about I know, this it's good. shows just how far we've come in in a, in a short space of time because you know there were question marks around David Wagner at the end of last season. Yep. We were on a, a horrendous yep. run. Yep. We said he had to start well. If not, his job would be in jeopardy. And he's done exactly that. Yep. How impressed have you been with Wagner so far this season? I've been impressed as much about Daniel Fa- Daniel Fa- <laughs> David Wagner <laughs> this season as I am about this Lakers lager. Yeah, that's and good. It, like, exceptional. Mm. I can't fault him. The fact that these ball players on like PP, uh, who I thought were, you know, could have signed for King's Lynn and fitted in fairly well, <laughs> um, you know, or even Norwich United, dare I say. <laughs> What's going on there, yeah. by the way? Maybe PP, you know, I sort of thought, I thought that was his level and that was that was poor from me. Mm. Um, so the fact that David Wagner has got a tune out of PP, I think that's good news. Um, I think he's given Adam Eder uh, the ability to be confident. Again, he's played Josh Sargent in his right position. Um, he, he's playing his system, his style. They're fitter, they're faster, they're more enjoyable to watch. Jack, away from all this stat nonsense, you go to Carrow now. You're on the edge of your seat if you're sitting down, which you should only be sitting down if you're in the other three stands. If you're sitting down in the Barclay, get out. Um, you know, you you just know that something's going to happen all the time. It, this team now remind me of the team that we had in the championship under Paul Lambert. Mm. Yeah, you score one, maybe we'll score two more. And I, I'm, I love what David's done with this team so far. And again, long may it continue. Now, the, the I guess the question mark will now be around Norwich City's next few games. So, shall we take a look at who yes. we're playing in September? Yes, let's do it. Um, we have a grand total of five games in September, including an EFL Cup fixture. Yeah. It starts, uh, well, we've already played one in September. We lost to Rotherham, so six games. Yeah. Um, Saturday, the 16th of September, we are at home yep. and we play Stoke City. Yeah. What are we thinking? I think we beat them. Yeah? I think we beat them. Although, although I do need to say it's going to be difficult. It's going to be a difficult game. I don't see that being a comfortable one. Um, and by the way, it's going to say a lot about this team, this squad, that you know they've obviously just had a disappointing result on the mm. road to Rotherham. That is a disappointing result. There's no disguising it. I do think it's valid that there was three away games in a row prior to that. I do think that's quite a good excuse, but it's still a disappointing result. If they bounce back from that with a win against Stoke, we're looking seriously good. Mm. That's, that's impressive because Stoke have got some quality players. Obviously, Alex Neal, very good championship manager um, and can absolutely do well with that team that they've got at Stoke this season. But I think we'll beat them. I think we might be looking at a 2-1 there, Jack. Okay. So we've beaten Stoke. Who are you? What, hang on, what's your score for Stoke? Come I on. think we beat them 2 0. Clean sheet. I like this defence at the moment, I really do. Angus will be happy. Nando's. We've um we've we've spoken badly about Enzo Maresca, yep. Leicester City's head coach. They will be the opponents after Stoke at home midweek. Mm. First one under the floodlights of the season, eight <laughs> o'clock kickoff. Um 
This will be fascinating because this will be the first test against a uh, you know a, a Premier League team of, of last season. No, it won't. Southampton away. We played Southampton away at home. Wrong again. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, you know it will be interesting yeah, to see yeah, how we perform okay. at home right, yeah. against. So the let's have some, let's put that let's put that on the table, okay? We went away to Southampton. I did oh, forget about Southampton. Oh, Southampton. Oh, yeah. They're the best thing since sliced bread. Oh, Russell Martin's the best manager in the world. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, cool. We'll do well to get a point. We were unlucky. We were bloody robbed at that place. <laughs> we no, were. Right. Yeah, we yeah. were robbed. Yeah. We should have won at that place, okay? Leicester come to Car Road under the floodlights on a Wednesday night. God, that gets me going. God, that gets me going. It does. <laughs> Mate, it seriously gets me going, and I think we're going to beat them. And it's it's <laughs> it's one of the games that I'm the most up for this season because everyone is loving Leicester. Do you not hate Leicester? Kind of. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. That was the one. No, team. no, 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 no. I actually no, no, no. I need to make this very abundantly clear. That was the one team you still had a bit of time yeah, for. No. I like no, no. I've got respect for Leicester. They're a proper football club with proper fans, proper club, good history. Um, yeah, I, I'm absolutely fine with Leicester. Right. Okay, but everyone is saying, including me, by the way, oh, you know, Leicester are going to run away with the league. How good would it be to beat them mm. and beat them convincingly at Carrow Road on a Wednesday night with a holding a pie that's so fucking hot that you can't eat it? Yeah, mm. and a, and, a, and a cup of coffee that sort that and that is like volcanic ash as well, <laughs> isn't it? By the way, you can't yeah? drink through the lids. Yeah. And we'll just be, you know, singing Premier League, you're having a laugh. Yeah. I can't wait for that game. There's three games I'm really up for this season. Okay. Yeah. In third place, it's Leicester at home. Yeah. Okay. Second place is hang on, I need more. Fourth place <laughs> is Leicester at home. Yeah. Yeah. Third place is Ipswich away. Uh, in third, second yeah. is Leeds at home. Oh, I'm having no. Oh, oh, Daniel Farker. Oh, I love you so much. Thank you. No, no, no. You're the opposition now. Let's tonk him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, yeah. But how much does that get you going? Do yeah, you it does actually. It, yeah? yeah, it does. Yeah? yeah. And then, of course, it's at your home number yeah. one. Wow. The the thing that excites me here, Chris. Go let's on. say we beat Stoke. Say let's, when? Let's say we beat Stoke. Yeah. Leicester, Wednesday, eight o'clock. Under the lights, still a bit of warmth in the air. Oh, that's good news. Hope, hope on the horizon. Yeah. And we beat Leicester. God. That could put us top of the table. And suddenly, you're coming towards the end of September, having beaten last year's Premier League team, thinking, oh. And, and I think we're starting <laughs> to then look at the sailors' hats. Yes, yes, I think we and are. Think, Again. And I think at that point, can we put a rule in? You dare to dream. Right, so hang on, right. We need to make this clear because we and that's close. We were close. Mm. I said if we beat Rotherham, then the hats were on because it was such a you know. Ah, we jinxed right. it. So what we're saying now is, mm. if we beat Stoke and we beat Leicester, they're on. They're on. Yeah, a hundred percent. They're, they're on. firmly on. I agree with that, and that excites me because I'm thinking about that walk. Now I park up in Thorpe at the moment. My walk back up that hill, mm. and my lungs are are, are full mm. of Norfolk air, yeah. soon to be. Premier League air. And I'm just thinking about that and everything about that excites me. Where's your beer? It's down here. It's right. empty. Get another beer. Okay, so we've, we've just beaten Leicester. Yeah, okay. we've beaten Leicester. Who have we got next? Who, who are we going to beat next? Well, we're away from the uh, the cauldron. Yep. Uh, and we travel to Plymouth. Plymouth. That's a banana skin fixture. That, that is one. a what? That is a, They look good this season. Yeah, it's a banana skin fixture. They look good and, this season. And Bally member is bound to score against us. Yes. As as was Jordan Hugo was it it yeah it it, it reeks of Rotherham that one mm. it, I don't get me wrong we <laughs> we absolutely should be beating them they're a good team but they're a good team and 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 weirdly I think we'll draw there do you think there's chance that the sailors hats come on and then we're made to look well yeah obviously foolish? well yeah obviously but I don't care so because why do you feel confident because, against but, Leicester because, but, but not Plymouth because passion. <laughs> <laughs> Because of the story. Yeah. Yeah? Two home games in a row. Mm. Oh, God. Really up for it. And then a punch in the gut. Yes, correct. Okay, no, We're I can fine. get along with that narrative. You've got to get carried away, haven't you, Jack, for God's sake? Uh, we then got another midweek fixture. Go on. And it's again on a Wednesday. This one quarter to eight. And it's in the cup. Oh, dear. In the EFL cup. The cup that I don't care about. But 
it will be my first away game of the season. I'm going to Fulham. I'm going to Craven Cottage, the most middle class ground in all of England. Um, Fulham, I think we lose. I mean, and I'm it's okay just, about that. I mean, it's just our absolute biggest bogey team, isn't it? Yeah. Like, what is it? We've not won there in 30 years or something. something Did like I read that. or was it 13 years? Oh, God, it's probably 30. Um, yeah. I mean, if we win, great. I mean, that'll be a laugh, won't it? But if we, but if, <laughs> it will be a laugh. Well, it will be a laugh. <laughs> it, will, it will, won't it? Will you know, laugh, break yeah. the hoodoo of Fulham. Yeah, 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 that'll be fun. Could you imagine? Right? Oh. Can I just build this up even more? We've beaten Stoke, we've yeah. beaten Leicester, <laughs> and then we beat the Fulham Hoodoo. What about Plymouth? Have we beaten them as well? Oh, yeah, we might have beaten them as well. Wow. You're laughing. And then you? we beat Fulham. If we, look, on a serious note, if we beat Fulham, it's a laugh, isn't it? In all seriousness, I think beating Fulham could be um, could actually be detrimental. I don't think we've got. A oh, thick here enough, we go. I don't think we've here got. Here we go. I don't think we've I'm, got a thick enough honestly, squad. Every season to deal with this comp. Co- every competition. season, I'm sick of this. I, I, you the make best me seasons we sick. have are when Norwich go out of cups early. This is the closest I've been to handing in my notice. It is. I cannot believe you're so anti-cup. Because Chris, Norris aren't in the in the position. Oh, you all, but there's always there's always something. The cup. Where's your passion? Where's your fight? The few cup runs we've had in recent years have if been we, coupled with some of the worst seasons. What is your ultimate Norwich City wet dream? Tell me. Norwich in Europe. Right. What happens if we win the cup? We'll probably finish tenth. Well, yeah, that's a good point. It yeah. is a good point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It is a good point. Exactly. So get some passion back in your blood. Blood. Yeah. And let's back the boys. Okay, so all right, we pump Fulham. No. I'm up, <laughs> I I'm up for we, the cup. I don't think we I'm pump up them. for the cup. I don't, and think, then, I don't think we pump them. To round off September. Yeah. And I'm surprised this fixture didn't go in your top five fixtures you're up for this season. Okay, go on. On the 30th of September, <laughs> Nerd City host. Yeah, it's my birthday. Birmingham or Birmingham. It's Birmingham, Birmingham, aren't they? On the 30th of September, you're 30. Yeah. And we face Birmingham. I mean, go. this is this is proper fairy tale stuff. Stuff of dreams, isn't yeah, it? Absolutely. I mean, everyone wants to play Birmingham on their birthday. Yeah. They? And, I've, and I'm lucky enough that A it's Birmingham gonna... birthday. Yeah. Wow. Birmingham do look quite good, by the way. They do, actually. But Birmingham are Birmingham, and they've got the... They have got <laughs> They're the, above us. Yeah. And they've got the <laughs> capability of being Birmingham always, <laughs> which means... They could win all of their games up until then, mm. and then that week they sack their board, their manager, and they get rid of three players, and someone's been done for drink driving. Mm. And then they come to Car Road, and they look like an absolute car crash. Mm. So that could easily happen because Birmingham, Birmingham. So we have predicted we beat Birmingham. <sighs> it's a big game. We win that two one. Edge it last minute. Yeah, yeah, I like that. We've beaten Stoke. Who's the last minute winner? Go on, turn me on. Um, turn me on. Duffy. <laughs> oh, I was hoping you'd say that. Really? Oh yes. Yeah, Duffy. Come on. And then he punches a corner flag. Oh god. Duffy is such an animal, isn't he? Mm, he scares He's me. Such a big bloke. That what? There's probably one player I don't want to do a TNC podcast with, and it's with Duffy because he, I think yeah. he scares me. Yeah. I think I, he eats the microphone. I could imagine him doing a John Fury and halfway <laughs> through the podcast just flips the table. <laughs> like, yeah, but good. Mm. We need that, by the way. Good. Yeah. Cameraman Max turns up and he just headbutts him. The other one I want this season Who? is Danny Bart. Oh. The player that quite a few Norwich fans yeah. have written off. Yeah. Oh, he's not good enough. Oh, he can't pass. Yada, yada, yada. Blah, blah, blah. I want him to do it when it matters the most. Mm. Ipswich Town at home. Oh, my God. Danny Bart. <laughs> Could you imagine Danny Bart gets it? And do you know, do you know what? He just he just gets his skull on it. Yeah. In fact, no worse, no worse. That's too good. It's like a corner. It's a bad corner. Yeah. And um, it sort of ricochets off through. Mm, I was players. thinking this as well. Yeah. And it sort of it like hits like it's arguably a handball. Like it hits him there. Yeah. Yeah. And it goes and in. It just fumbles. And in. then. He goes over to the Ipswich fans and he rips his shirt in half. Yeah. And he pounds his chest. That's what I want. Danny mm. Bart, deliver it. I'm excited. So that's September. Yep, looking good. Five games. We've predicted oh. four wins and a draw. <laughs> 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 On a serious note, how do you actually think it's, we're going to do in September? It's a, it's a tough month. It is a tough month. Uh, and actually looking at... Oh, it's tough. It's all right. It's tough. I think Stoke and Birmingham at home, we win. Leicester, I'd take a point. 
if I'm being serious. Yeah. Plymouth, again, <laughs> I actually think a point there is good. Okay. And Fulham, I honestly couldn't care less about. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we can't so be criticised for not being honest. So I think two wins... Two wins Two draws and a loss. Okay. And I'd be happy with that. Okay. Because I think that still keeps us in the top six. Yeah. And if we're there or thereabouts, mm. that's that's, that's probably, good enough. That's better than what we'd have expected Absolutely. this season. Thanks for keeping my feet on the ground. <sighs> September. Big month. Um, Twitter questions. Yeah, let's do it. Wow. Adam says, um, Adam Eder had Virgil van Dijk on strings he last did, night. He did, he did, he did. Where do I sign up for the fan club, Jack? Well, I'm glad you asked, Adam. Um, look, fan club um, entries, you don't have to you know, pay anything. It's completely free. No, you, you, you be, just have to be nice to him. You do have to, you have to post one positive thing about Adam Eder on it. Every week. Yeah. No. Once, once a week. Once a week? Once Is a that week. what you're demanding? Yeah. Once a week, you have to post Adam Eder propaganda. Yeah. I like that. And, and you're in. Yeah, fine. There we go. Uh, no, on a serious note, it did very, very well. Um, Buttski. Oh, what a name. Uh, it says, rant. Hate Oof. the international break. Me and you you both. always have that annoying feeling that either Norwich players come back injured or the momentum we have built up is disrupted. And now it looks like we've lost Nunes with an angry mm. face. Buttski, me and you, mate. Just as you feel as if you're getting into a, into a rhythm with football. And actually, I think the international break came at a good time for Norwich. This time around, we'd just, beaten, we'd just been beaten by Rotherham. Um, a few players, I think, were you know, needing some fitness. Huang's come in. He's had a bit of time to gel. Um, although, he's been, has he been on the international break? Yeah. I think he might have been, yeah. yeah. So, in England, mind. Yeah, so... Um, Look, I, I'm not a fan of international breaks. It doesn't help that I've got no faith in Gareth Southgate as England manager. Oh, really? You're no, one of them? I'm one of those ones. So, um, And I agree. And, and, and there is always the risk of injuries. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't like them. Good. One bit. Matthew Duke, second name of the podcast so far, <laughs> says, Opinions on the new line in Castle Lager. <laughs> Saw Jack drinking it before the whole game and must say, at a glance, he didn't look too impressed. <laughs> Although when I tried it, it didn't seem too bad. Well, Matthew, that is because it wasn't Lakers. Exactly. I mean, it's a good enough lager, but when you when you compare it to, to Lakers, it's it's <sighs> like comparing kind of, you know, Haaland's a good striker, but he's not Ashley Barnes. <sighs> You know, you can watch Haaland and and go, yeah, he's all right. And then you watch Barnes and you go, oh, now, like now we're watching a proper player. That is... That's the kind of the equivalent. Yeah. L- Lion and Castle six out of ten. Lakers ten out of ten. Yeah. But um, yeah, maybe maybe it was the company I was with at Hull. Was I talking to you before the Hull game? Yeah, probably. Maybe that, that was why you were so miserable. Yeah. And um, Louis, his statement. Borgia signs mm. should be given as many minutes as his fitness allows. He reeks of goals. If I see PP starting over him when he's fit, I'm going to let out a long and despairing, despairing, sorry, sigh. I'm I'm really intrigued about Borgia. Signs. Wagner cannot play PP over Borgia. We haven't signs, seen. Surely, we surely. haven't seen signs. So, you know, I'm excited as 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 Louis is, but we can't be getting. You know, we can't be saying he can't be starting with PP when we haven't seen him play. Yeah. Equally, yeah. it is PP, so signs should be starting over him. But no, I'm 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 excited about signs because you know he, he hasn't even entered the thoughts yet mm. because he's been injured. Yeah. And I'm just thinking like, you know, we've been good already. If you add another bit of spice in there, mm. that could take us to another level. And that really excites me. I'll say something about Borgia signs, okay? I'll try to say as much as I can. Get excited. Oh. On what basis? I can't tell you the basis. Oh. But he's very, very up for it. Wow. And he is quite feisty. Yeah. And he is absolutely the midfield spice. Whew. That's got me excited. Yeah, it will. I think I'm having a hot flush just thinking about no, it. No, I am as well. Wow. Borgia, Borgia boy. The championship won't know what hit it, honestly. When Borgia enters the field, yeah. the championship won't know what hit it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm saying it now. Maybe we need to do our September predictions again. Arthur Kemp. People, great, great name. Yeah, such a solid name. Arthur Kemp. What does he do for a living, Oh, he, He's a... Oh. God, he, you know, he does something, something so important. needed in life. 
Arthur Kemp. Arthur Kemp. He's got no bio, but fine, I'm all right with that. Doesn't anyway. need to explain himself. <laughs> he doesn't. People have seemed quite negative about Huang and Bart. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> what are you laughing for? I think it's good they've had a break to settle in, and I think Huang will suit Wagner's system perfectly as a pressing forward, and Bart to be a proper bulldozer at the back. Mm. Do you know what? <laughs> Arthur Kemp. Yeah. I love that from you. I think Arthur Kemp should be Prime Minister because that statement from him in just a few sentences has really excited I, me. I want Arthur Kemp on the mic pre-match Ooh. for the Stoke game. Yeah. I do. Arthur, I completely agree. You know, I, I really think the business that Norwich City have done, and, and, and I, was, I wasn't critical, I just wasn't overly excited about it at the start of the season. I've changed. I'm fickle. I've always been fickle, but extra fickle this season. Uh, I'm pleased that you're and, finally being honest. And um, look, out of all of the signings, <clears throat> Huang is who excites me the most. Good. There's just something about that bloke that I think stinks of goals. I just, I think there's a bit, there's a story there, isn't there? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. He's, no, kind I, of, he's kind of not done the business. No, he's got something to but, prove. But I like, I kind of like that. Like, good. Mm. Maybe he'll play with more fire in his belly. Look, I think I think Huang. <clears throat> we might we may get to um, January and go. Sergeant's going to have a tough ass to get back into Maybe. this team. I, I hope that's the case. And I think Danny Bart's a solid signing as well. Oh, I've God, spoken yeah. to a, to a good few Sunderland fans now. Yeah, and they've all said how disappointed they are to let him go. So there you go. Uh, really excited about that one. Um, Josh Bailey. Yes. Statement. Yes. Gabrielle Sarah will be our first £50 million sale. <laughs> 50 million quid. It doesn't seem, but with the price of some of these players, yeah. you've got to bear in mind the numbers he's putting up at the moment. Yeah, yeah. In Look, the championship, we'll put it, No, 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 we'll put it this way. No, 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 we'll put it this way. If he keeps up the numbers he's putting in, mm. 50 million quid. Mm. Wow. If you want him, 50 million quid. If he keeps putting the numbers he's putting in, yeah, uh, but I, 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 I sus- do you know what, Josh? Yeah, it's a great statement. Fine, I'm all right with that. And actually, I know I'm more than all right with that. Mm. But I don't really want to think about selling him right no, now. No, we I want, keep to, him. I want to enjoy him. He leads us forward. I think we should all learn from Emmy Buendia, yeah. and we should truly appreciate Gabriel Sara whilst he's yes. a city player. I agree. Good. This is a this is an intriguing one from James, uh, and it's a bit of a conundrum for us, Chris. Right. Okay. Um, he oh, says, um, "Would you be starting Andamida or Huang for our next game against Stoke? From what we know, <clears throat> Huang seems to be the ideal replacement for Sargent and his style, but it could really damage Andamida and his confidence mm. um, if he's being dropped." I st- I'm starting the Irish R9. Okay. I'm, I'm backing him. I'm yep. backing him. I, I think he deserves to be backed. I think he's had a good international break. He's obviously scored that fantastic penalty. Um, I'd start with him. Mm. Don't get me wrong, if he's not performing, I'd put him off for Huang early and, and give Huang enough minutes to but actually... Surely that damages his confidence more. Being no, I don't think so. No, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. You start If you start a player, you start a player. Every player wants to be started. Yeah. Players don't want to be coming off the bench. So for me, I'll start the Irish R9. Mm. Um, hopefully he puts one in the back of the net. Bring Huang on. Mm. I'm up for it. Yeah, that's what I'd do. What would you do? Would you do that? Well, I, I guess the other option is, do you drop Barnes? No, God no. No? So God it's Barnes no. and Huang or Ida. I think Ashley Barnes is undroppable. Really? Yeah. We're at that I stage think, already. I think he's integral to the way that this Norwich City team play. Okay. okay. I think he is pulling this team towards the back mm. of the net in every way, shape and form. He's so important for us. I agree with you. I think you I think you start Barnes and I think you start Ida. And then and then I think the next game, I think actually looking at at September's schedule, you've got Stoke. You've actually got a real bunch of fixtures. You've got four games within two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, I think Huang will definitely start against Fulham in the cup. Yeah, and I think there's a good chance that he maybe starts against Leicester. Yeah, but I think for Stoke, Adam Eder plays. Do you think he'll start against Leicester as well? I don't think he will. I think it's going to take him a couple of games, okay. I, I, especially if Adam starts scoring. Yeah, goals. yeah. Well, that's the thing. Well, sorry, no, doesn't. Uh, sorry, I don't mean start. Um, scores more goals yeah, because he has already scored yeah, yeah. goals and important goals um, Bernie Beano wow 
Bernie Beano. Bernie Beano. <laughs> no, look. Um, no, wow. uh, he looks like an absolute lad. Yeah. He's got absolutely no no bio, but he's his question. Mm. Where would be a good finish for us this season? Do you think the expectations are the playoffs? Or are they to finish mid-table and build for next season? See, because Bernie Beano has mm. is, is brought up quite an interesting point here. Because my expectations at the start of the season were pretty much on the deck. Yeah. I was looking at this... I might have never been lower. Yours were in the relegation zone. I was looking at slightly below mid-table. Not relegation zone. No, I said, don't, I said no, 15. No, 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 I said 15. No, 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 and that is not in the relegation zone. You can't get out of it. Said you said Norwich... Place. No, you didn't. You I said did. we'd be flirting with relegation. Yeah, flirting. You said you were worried about relegation. Relega- no, you said you were worried. Anyway, um, I think we should review... Now, I think it's a good time to review because our expectations We're are way our, too low. Our one month appraisal. Correct. So, where would now be a good finish for us this season? Like, for me now, Jack. A good, good finish. Uh, like, answering Bernie Beano's question, I think the expectation now, as things stand, should be playoffs. Well, at least. I think there's a difference between hopes and expectations. I hope that Norwich City finish in the playoffs. And from what I've seen this season... No, you don't. I, you hope Norwich City finish top two. Well, yes. But well, I, exactly. I think we're capable of finishing in the top six. Yes. But I don't think expectations should be too different from the start of the season because really our sample size is still fairly small. Yeah, I would fair. say... That's fair. I would say a good expectation for this season would be eighth. But from what we've seen, I'm a bit excited. I look at this team... What we've got, how we're playing, David Wagner's football. I would be disappointed if we're if we're not in the playoffs. I think I'll be more annoyed than last season. Really? Yeah, seriously, because I just I love the look of us. Look at the way we're playing football, Jack. Mm. Look at the way we're bringing it to the opposition. Mm. We've got leaders, experience, youthfulness. Johnny Rowe giving it a go. A big go. We've got Gabriel Sara winning the fucking Player of the Month in his first month. I mm. mean. You know, you've got to be in the playoffs with this Norwich team. We, we've got to be in the playoffs with this Norwich team. But it's an interesting question, Bernie Dino. And if you're watching, let us know in the comment section where you now think Norwich should be finishing this season. I, I, I think maybe you can have that discussion at Christmas. I think to be changing our expectations so wildly different after three weeks is bold. Agree to disagree. Lenny Millington. Short and sweet question. We going up. Question mark? <laughs> oh, Lenny's teasing us. Lenny because wants us to say the three letter word. Lenny's words. posing the question. <laughs> and Lenny knows what we're like. And I respect Lenny for that. What was the question? Are we going up? Yeah. Short and sweet question. We going up? Even the way he's worded it. Mm. He wants us to say the three letter word. I, I think it's too early, Lenny. We can't say that right now. We can't. And don't you dare. Don't say it. It'll be clipped up. Don't say it, it'll be clipped up. Don't say it. I think we've got a better chance than I thought we had. Yes, I will agree with that. Your turn. Um, Matt Gibson yep. says, um, when are you going to get some of these new lads on the podcast? I want Barnes, Rowe and Stacey. I mean, Matt, there's some bloody high expectations there. We talk about high expectations yeah. for, for the football club. Wow. Um, when are we getting some of these new lads on? Uh, well... Um, I we are trying as always to continue to get the best guests possible for you subscribers. We're trying, to watch. and we're trying. And what I will say is, and this isn't, in fact, no, I can't say that. I I think to, for the context around how we get guests on the podcast, for those that are players or staff at the football club, we will try and think of people who who, who speak well, yep. have interesting stories, yep. and that haven't maybe spoken too much already. Yeah. We're, we're, we're trying to bring a different story to what's already been out there. Yeah. And once we've identified someone, we will then approach the football club and yep. say, excuse me, Norwich City Football Club, please may we have X or yeah. Y. Um, and then we will have a discussion, usually over like months. Yeah. And maybe that happens. More often or not, it doesn't happen. Um, but we are continuing to try and find stories and podcasts that you haven't heard elsewhere. What I would say is stay tuned. We're not too far away. Mm. We're not too far away. Mm. You'll love it. Wow. Um, Good. All about opinions. Statement. 
I made a bet with people I work with that if Norwich do finish in the top six, I genuinely think Gabriel Sara could win Championship Player of the Season. My colleagues think I'm mad. What do you think? No, I think I don't. I think that's a, 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 the safest bet I've heard yeah, for quite some I time. Agree, I agree. I, with you. I, I, if you look at the, I, I think your colleagues are mad. And look, I know that you know it's still early days, but some of the numbers that that Sarah is putting up, and like he passes the eye test of like. We, you don't have to watch football to know that he's a good player. Yeah. So he passes that, and then you're kind of looking to sort of dig into data. And like every single metric, he is <clears throat> above and beyond everyone else in this division. Yes. So if if Sarah stays fit, and if Norwich City continue to thrive as as a squad, I've got no doubts Sarah wins Player of the Season mm. in terms of not only Norwich but the, the Championship Player of the Season. <clears throat> I think he is that good. I want to just quickly talk about your Johnny Road there. Yes. Okay. I'd like to propose something. Okay. I'd like to. If make you're you... asking for more money, the answer is no. I'd like to make you a one-time offer. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you've said this sounds dangerous. You've said yes. If Johnny Road, <sighs> yeah, gets in the Championship Player of the Season, Championship Team of the Year. Sorry, yeah, team of the year. Yeah, that's even better. Thank yeah. you very much. I forgot that. Um, then you'll give a grand to Big C. Yes, our official charity partner, along with Norfolk and Waverley Mind, fantastic charities. I would like to pose something else to you. I'd like to offer because look, this yeah. is this is going to do damage to your. This is going to do serious damage. Okay, <laughs> mentally gonna and financially, it's going to happen. Yeah. So I, you want to do more damage? Personally, no, no, no. I think you should take this chance. I'd like to offer you the opportunity to pay the money in instalments. <laughs> and I'll tell you how you'll do You're it. You're offering me finance. When when jo- when Johnny Rowe, if Johnny Rowe yeah. gets in the championship team of the month, right, no. You should pay That's instalments. Not the bet. Uh, look, I think you should be paying instalments. I'm tr- mate, I'm trying to help you out here. No, no, no. Because he's no. going to win it. He's going to win so it. So which way do you want? And I want to pay it in a lump sum. You want the big sting. I want the big sting mm. and I want it to, to... But because it won't hurt, actually. Because when <laughs> when Roe gets in the team of the season, it yeah. probably means that Murray City have been promoted, right? Yeah. And that's going to make me so happy. Yeah. It's almost so, like... So I, so I help a charity and watch my team succeed. It's almost like the cost of promotion. Yeah, and I, and yeah, I would... Yeah, that's, that's a, a, a bet I'm willing to take on. Fine. But thanks for the offer. No, I appreciate it. Um, right, we've got a question from Michael Cowley Shaw, and he's given me a pronunciation. That, oh, he has. Okay. He's given me a pronunciation. Well, I can say it a bit more fluently than that. Cowley Shaw. Cowley Shaw. Um, question: Kieran Maguire noted the Atanasio shareholder deal on the Price of Football podcast this week. He said fan rep on the board could be addressed. Should he take full control in January 2026? Do you think this is realistic or will Mark look for 100% buyout and his own people instead? Uh, look, well, so there's obviously been development, hasn't there, with the Atenasios over mm-hmm. the past few weeks. Yeah. Uh, and that deal is, is moving moving along as quickly as it, as it can. The news is they've had a, they've had a meeting. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, the Atenasios are business people yeah and, and now Norwich City fans and, and Norwich City fans and look we've we've been lucky enough to meet them mm-hmm. they strike me as good people they strike me as people that, that care but as, as we've said before you know they're investors they're looking for a return I think they will start to bring in their own people yeah I think having their involvement will help Norwich City Football Club how the structure looks I'm not sure at the moment mm. but Look, I, all I can say at the moment, I think, is that I'm pleased of their involvement. Yeah. Oh, no, obviously, I don't, yeah. I don't think there's... Yeah. What's the question? Will there be fan... I, I think, Norris, in terms of fan voices at a quite an important level at Norwich City, it's better than most yeah. clubs have. And I think the fans do have a, have a real voice mm. at this football club. And I, and, I, and I don't think that's the case at a lot. Yeah. So I think that, will, that, yeah. that trend will continue. I do think that the Atanasio group will eventually go for a 100% buyout. 100%. Um, I do think it will take time, though. And yeah. I do trust that they want to do it the right way yeah. as well. And, well, and we've I, obviously heard them on our, on our podcast, Jack, speaking about this. Like, I don't think they want to come in and bulldoze the place and rip the soul out of the football club. I think they're going to buy in in stages. This is obviously the next stage. 
um, you know, it, it's set to be 40%. So they'll be level with Delia and, and, and obviously Michael Wynne Jones as well. Um, that's exciting, but I think the next stage is, is even more exciting to come. They will bring their own people, obviously, right? But I don't, I, maybe people don't know this, but there's already people that, that are there, that are their people. Mm. And so, um, yeah, look, it, it, it's an exciting time. Um, we're, we're at, the, ne- we're at the, the dawn of, of the next phase. Well, look, they, they've said, haven't they, you know, they, they want to learn and they are learning and, and the process has already been slow. So, like, they're not rushing this um, yeah. to any extent. I think, you know, I think fans will continue to have a voice and I think the Athanasios will be a good thing for Norwich Cammy Johnny Rowan Joyer says, <laughs> Statement Sarah will get a Brazil call-up by the end of the season <laughs> if he keeps his performance up. Cammy, Cammy, it's on. Brazil, it's, imagine. Cammy. I mean, that Brazil squad is stacked with talent. Yeah, but, but it's not got Gabby Sarah. I mean, that would be phenomenal. I think, it, I know, I agree. I agree with Cammy Johnny Rowan Joyer. I mean, that would be absolutely phenomenal. I think he'll get there. I think he, I think he'll get there. Do you think he'll get there, Jack? Well, I think he's, he's, he's certainly on course. It would be a remarkable achievement if he did. I think he'll get there. What about this from Zainal? Um, Twitter okay. bio. Um, yeah, Zainal. Yes, I saw this, yes. Um, English language educator. Yeah. Um, he's taught in China, Japan, Thailand and... and, and Thailand? <laughs> that was right now. For Thailand and Brisbane. Oh, God. Um, anyway, he says, Hi, guys, from Brisbane, Australia. Followed you since the COVID watch long days. NCFC fan since I was a kid in the 70s from Fiji. Wow. Made it to Karode in 2000. Um, and hopefully again one day. And he sent a picture of that. He's actually sent a, submitted a picture of the program that day, which has amazing. a very youthful Craig Fleming in a Coleman's kit. Amazing. Um, I mean, that's quite something, isn't it? Well, I, thank you, Zainal, first of all, for, for coming along for the ride. One of my favourite things about um, you know TNC is the stories we hear about how people... You know, become Norwich City supporters. Yeah. Like you know, for 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 you and I, it's the standard. You know, like parents supported it. Or yeah. we, you know, we just grew up around the football club, so you just support Norwich because it's the only thing here. Um, but for for well, people, no, like, there is the Broads and Great Yarmouth, of course. No, no, no um, the Broads. But for Zayno, I mean, that story is so different, and you could have any team in the world to pick from, and you pick Norwich City. I mean, absolutely brilliant. Why wouldn't you? And, Good and, if, on you. and if you're listening on on, on uh, audio or YouTube, let us know in the YouTube comments section. Um, how did you start supporting Norris City? I agree. And, and where are you from? Let's hear from you. Ollie, uh, his uh, handle is Northern and Norwich One. Okay. And Ollie says, statement. Since Roe is about to win the Ballon d'Or <laughs> and be the all time England under 20s top goal scorer. <laughs> Jack might as well make it five grand since <laughs> one is just too disrespectful to Johnny Rowe. Who's this? Ollie. 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 Feel, look, I'll send you my bank details, mate, and feel free to ping me some money. I can't afford <laughs> five grand. I think a grand's pretty punchy. I do it? agree with Ollie, though. It is disrespectful. Look, is disrespectful. When, when we're in the Premier League next season and you know Johnny Rowe is, is leading the line for us, we'll have another bet and, and we'll see how yeah. it goes. Because at the moment, you know, that is classic you know, pinned up in the dressing room mm. to prove me wrong. So I'm willing to take on another bet next season. Okay, good. Um, there was also another one about, there was also another one about Great Yarmouth, which I can't find. Yeah, no, it's it's here. I've gone then. Uh, it's from, <laughs> it's from my good friend, please can Harry Brister. It, please can I ask it to you though? Thank no, you. of course, yeah, yeah. Um, Harry, actually the most liked question of the week. Harry Brister. Good guy. What a boy. Yeah. Let's see what it says in his bio. NCFC fan, beyond average golfer. Very good golfer. Harry says... Just won the Borbor Club Championships. Congratulations, Harry. Um, A question for Jack Reeve, TNC. Mm. If GY is so marvellous, why is the queue always longer to get out than in? And that's the most popular, the most liked question of the week. Well, I think the interesting thing with this, Harry, and thanks for the question... I don't. I never like to see fake news being spread, <laughs> and, and, and look, I think this is an issue with, with online. I like Harry. I'm disappointed that he's spreading, um, uh, you know, false claims here. If you know the the A47 through sort of Brundle and Blowfield at the moment is being set as a dual carriageway, 
And that's because of the sheer amount of volume coming into the Upgrade Yard. Hang on, hang on. Have no, no, you no, no, no. seen no, 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 no. the amount of traffic coming to the coast Have at this time of just... year? All of you inner city snobs, as soon as you see a bit of sun, you're escaping your suburban hell holes to come to the coast Have you just... and have a dip in the North Sea. And ha I'm sick no. of it. No, right. I'm sick of you snobs coming to the coast. You're not welcome. No, no. You're no. not welcome. We don't want to go to Yarmo. You're we not don't. welcome. You just said that. You're speaking about fake news. <laughs> You just said that the A... What was it that's getting redeveloped? It's the dual carriageway through Blowfield and you, Brundle. No, but you're talking out your ass, aren't you, Jack? No, I'm not. Mate, that road, yeah. that bloody Acle Strait... No, not the Acle Strait. That, yeah, well, that's not the, the way... Not the Acle Strait. Well, that's the only way into Yarmouth, isn't it? And that's not getting redeveloped. Why? Because they don't want to kill the snails. <laughs> it's true to be yeah. fair. And I'll tell you another thing. Why have they built a brand new multi-million pound bridge? And where have they built it? Where have they built it? Well, they've built it over the river from Yarmouth to Galston. That's because, right. Because, and why have they built it? To help people out. Because of the thriving, bustling trade that no, Great Yarmouth right. now To has. help people out. No, absolutely not. To help it's people out. It's the thriving, bustling trade. And you know what, Harry? It's awful. You're not welcome in Yarmouth. <laughs> He's not welcome in Yarmouth. And you won't see the crystal clear blue sea with the golden sands. My word. I apologise, and it, and I actually need to make this clear. I'm a bit worried, actually, because I've been seeing quite a few people go to Great Yarmouth recently. Yeah, and all of you the young lads, I'm Ashley Barnes, and like, and like, I'm starting to think they're listening to you. Yeah, they and are. And look, and guess what? They're all having a great and time. If they want to step on needles whilst they're walking along the beach with their dogs, then go for Have it. Have you spoken to Ashley Barnes recently? Uh, not he since had, he went to Yarmouth, because I'm disappointed in he him. He had the time of his life in Great Yarmouth. <laughs> he was at the circus. And my good friend Jack oh, J, who runs the Hippodrome, and Jack said, he quoted, that was the best day of my life. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't say that, but I'm sure it's what he thought. Good. Should we end it there? Yeah, uh, basically, we're looking good. Lakens are producing lager. I mean, honestly, I mean, it's how incredible. good? I mean, I could have had... I mean, I've had this before and know how good it is. I mean, but if it wasn't a weeknight, I could have comfortably sunk maybe at least four more of those, to be yeah. honest with you. Easily. Lakens Lager, link in the description, 20% off. Back that the... won't be around for long. So if you want it, get it now. Back the boys. Yeah. Praise Adamida. Yeah. If you want to join the Adamida fan club. Yeah. Donate to Big C in Norfolk Waveney Mind. Yeah. Anything else to say? Um, be kind to Great Yarmouth. <laughs> No, I disagree with that. Um, and we'll be back next week for another podcast. Yes. After we've just beaten Stoke. Thanks very much for watching. And we'll see you all again very soon. On the ball, sissy. Bye-bye.